Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you are doing well. If you're new around here, my name is Brian Taylor. I'm the owner of Dreamline Realty right here in Charlotte, and I appreciate you checking out our channel. So over the last week or so, we've had some very interesting inflation data circling the news. And we also had our good friend Jerome Powell with the Fed breaking down the strategy going forward with rate hikes. So as you may have already seen, we started last week with great news on inflation. And in this article from CNBC, it shows that inflation rose at a 4% annual rate in May, which is the lowest level in two years. Then the following day, we got PPI numbers, and those also look good as well. And this headline from Reuters says U.S. producer inflation subsides as energy and food prices fall. So basically what is happening, guys, is the Fed rate hikes from the last 15 months are starting to work, and inflation has slowly and consistently been coming down month after month. So it looks like things are heading in the right direction, right? And then, of course, later in the day last Wednesday, the Fed met and Jerome Powell said that they were pausing interest rate hikes for June. But then he also went on to say that there are potentially two more rate hikes coming by the end of the year. And guys, they are serious about getting inflation back to their 2% level. And then just this morning, which is June 21st, the Fed announced from their minutes from last week, they released those today, which further solidifies the decision, as this article from CNBC shows, Powell expects more Fed rate hikes again as inflation fight has a long way to go. So with that said, the question is now, what is going to happen with interest rates moving forward through the rest of the year and into 2024? And I wanted to share my thoughts with you about what I think is gonna happen. But before we do that, let's look at some recent stats for May regarding the Charlotte real estate market because I wanna kind of set this stage for what I see happening as we progress. So let's get started here with new listings. All right, so now let's take a look at new listings. New listings were down 25.4% from last year, guys. So that's a significant decrease. If we look at May, here's our 4568 number. If we go back to June of last year, we were at 6,520 uh, new listings. That is a 2,000 houses less this year than there was last year. We're gonna talk about what this means as far as what's gonna happen with sales prices farther down in the video, so make sure you stick around. But now I wanna take us over and take a look at what's going on with pending sales. Okay, pending sales were also down year over year at 13.1%. That is also playing into the factors here of the low inventory situation. So if we look back to, to last year, we have 4,322 pending sales in June. That's about in line to what we have this year, guys, but we're still down 13.1% year over year. And the next thing I wanna show you guys is days on the market. So days on the market right now sits at 34 days on the market. That is an increase, guys, of 143% from this time last year. Last year, days on the market sat at 14 days. So with these rising interest rates, houses are taking longer to sell, but the days on the market has actually come down from where we were back in February, March, and April. All of those months were at 40 days on the market. We are now at 34, which is still an increase from a year ago, but as I have talked about in my previous videos, guys, um, a house on the market in a good neighborhood in a good location is still selling relatively fast in a lot of cases with multiple offers. So we're gonna have to see where this goes, but we're definitely higher than we were from a year ago. Now let's talk about average list price, guys. This one here is getting a little bit out of control. So we are at an increase of 11.1% from last year. Our current number from an average list price in May was 534000 188. If you look a year ago in June, that was at 479, 696. So it's a big, big increase on this metric. Now, I don't necessarily like the averages. We're going to talk about median in just a minute. But look at what has happened with the average list price since we uh, got into the month of December. We were at 406 in December. Then we went to 450 in January, 462 in February, 503 in March. We thought that was getting a little bit out of control. 521 in April and now at 534,000 for the month of March. Now we're going to take a look at the average sales price next. 
And when we take a look at the average sales price, we're seeing the same kind of trend. We were up 4.6% from last year, sitting at 483,322. Again, if we go back a few months back in January, we were at 417,743. And then we've gone up every single month from there. February was 42913, March 442, April 458, and now we're up to 483,000 guys. So what I wanna do now is shift our gears over to the median sales price and take a look at what's going on with that. So the median sales price, guys, is actually down 2% from last year. So that is an interesting number. It's showing a negative at 385,000 from this time last year when we sat at 400,000. But let's take a look at what's happened over the last previous months because even though it is down 2%, we are starting to see this number creep up. So what do I mean by that? If we go back and take a look at February, we were at 355,000 in March at 368, April 375, and then May of course sits at 385. So even though year over year we're down 2%, month over month we are continuing to see this number rise. So we really have to track this because I only expect this number to rise as well. So now what I wanna do guys is talk about some inventory stats. So inventory of homes is actually up 6.6%, or sorry, 6.7%, and we sit at 4,660 seven total homes for sale. But if we go back to June of last year, we were at 4,042. So we are seeing that increase from a year ago. But again, I like to look at what's going on month over month. Last year in June, we had 5,993 current homes for sale. We saw a nice little rise during the summer months of last year, which is typical, right? But what's happening now is we are seeing this number continually go down. So we are at 7,000 in November. As you can see, every single month we are going down and we're sitting at the 4,667, guys. This is not normal for this time of year. We should be seeing inventory going up. We're gonna talk a little bit more as we get into the video about why that's happening. But this number needs to be substantially higher in order for us to gain some traction on this supply and demand. And the next thing I wanna talk to you about is percent of what sellers are getting for their houses right now. Okay, because inventory is so tight, some of these houses guys are selling really, really quickly. We saw a minus 4.7% on the percent of original list price received. We're sitting at 98% right now. So what that means is a seller selling their house, a buyer should expect to be able to go on average and pick up that property for 2% less than list price. But this number, has consistently gone up over the last couple of months due to the low amount of inventory. So if we look back to uh, December of 2022, we are at 94.8% of list price received. That number has gone up every single month since then, we're really gonna have to track this. Again, with the low inventory and the amount of buyer demand, sellers are getting real close to what they're listing for right now. And now I just wanna talk to you real quick about months of inventory on the market. All right, so let's talk about month supply of homes for sale, and then we're gonna dive back into my prediction of where this market is headed as we head through the rest of the year, especially into next year. But month supply of homes sits at 1.3 months. That's an increase of 44.4% from a year ago. But guys, this number is consistently going down every single month. We are not gaining any momentum on inventory. So our highest that we had was October of last year. Actually, I'm sorry, November of last year. We set at 1.9 months, but we have gone down every single month and we're sitting at 1.3 months of supply, which was what it was in April. That means if no other houses came on the market, it is going to take roughly 45 days for everything that is on the market to be purchased. So some crazy numbers, guys. We're in a really tight market, but let's shift gears and go back over and talk about what I think is going to happen as we go forward. So back to the question about the future of interest rates and how they will impact you if you're thinking about buying a house in Charlotte. And this would be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you can track this crazy housing market with me and also give the video a like if you're getting any value from it. Okay, so in my opinion, the worst is behind us from an interest rate perspective. Yes, there's other stuff happening out there in the economy, but I do believe the Fed is serious about further rate hikes and I do believe they will raise rates two more times before December with each rate hike around a quarter of a point. Now, a lot of this certainly depends on what the inflation numbers look like in July, but I don't see them backing down at all, even if inflation numbers come in better than expected. I think the Fed is very serious about getting back to their two 
percent target. Now, with that said, I don't see mortgage rates rising much further either. I believe the markets have priced in these two rate hikes that they're potentially coming up. And I think we're gonna hover around that 7% mark. As you can see right here, today's 30 year fixed rate sits at 6.87%. That is of course from Mortgage News Daily. But if inflation numbers continue to come down month over month, which they have, I anticipate mortgage rates to actually maybe even fall a little bit as we head through the end of the year. So guys, I've said this before and I'm sticking to my prediction. I do believe the Fed will be done with rate hikes in December. And I actually think we're gonna see rate cuts happen around Q1 or Q2 of 2024. But guys, here's the thing. When everybody knows that rate hikes are officially over, that is when we're going to see a significant drop in rates. I think we're gonna be back in the high 5% range by the March or June timeframe of 2024. And if that is the case, guys, I think anybody looking to buy a house in Charlotte better buckle up and be prepared because the market is absolutely going to be on fire, in my opinion. Now, I've talked about this a few times in a couple of my other videos, but I really want to reiterate the point here because this is very likely to happen and I don't want anyone to get blindsided about it when it does. So here's what I'm trying to say. If rates fall into the 5% range, and we don't have any more meaningful increase in inventory, we will likely be headed back to 2021 behaviors. And I'm talking about multiple offers, much more intense than we're seeing right now. I'm talking about crazy due diligence fees, and I'm talking about skyrocketing sales prices. So right now in Charlotte, there is a crazy amount of pent up buyer demand. So we're talking to so many people that want to buy a house right now, but they're waiting for rates to fall. They're waiting for rates to fall. We hear that over and over again. We also have a lot of people that have leases ending next year and they don't want to renew their lease. They want to buy. So guys, when rates get into the 5% range, so many buyers are going to be flooding the market. It's going to be absolutely wild. Now, on the other hand, falling mortgage rates could potentially cause more sellers to feel more comfortable in selling because right now they are not giving up their 3% fixed rate to make a move into another house that is priced higher and has a 7% rate attached to it. And because of these low inventory levels, this is why I'm saying we're going to see home prices continue to go up. And in my opinion, they're gonna keep going up until we can get the inventory balance in line with supply and demand. But here's the thing, I think it's gonna take several years for that to happen. We are at such low levels of inventory, it's gonna take a while for that to happen. And I know a lot of you don't wanna hear what I'm saying right now, but unfortunately, that's just where we are. So if you're buyer. Get ready, get pre-approved, and be ready to go because the market is soon going to be a frenzy again. Now, of course, again, this is just my opinion. And again, subscribe to the channel so we can track this market together. So guys, if you need my help in your home search or if you want to talk about your situation, scan that QR code or click the link in the description below. Set up some time on my calendar. We can meet online on Zoom, put a face to a name, and see how I can best help you out. And you may have noticed on the channel, guys, that my agents are out doing neighborhood tours because we're trying to showcase you the best places to live in and around Charlotte. So I hope you are enjoying those videos. So guys, that's all I got for today. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, make it a great day.